and now bringing you the breakdown on the pro and prep scene. The Hunter Shepherd Podcast starts right now. of ESPN Radio and ESPN News, 250 plus markets across the country, check your AM, FM listing nearest you, also being broadcast on live national airwaves, the Sirius XM Channel 80, uh, lots of stuff to get into this week, we are less than three days away from the start of fast pitch season. And, folks, I could tell you right now, I could not tell you how long we have been without high school sports. It has been that long. Also, later on, I'll break down the tentative ADM, which teams from 2A we should expect to see in A, and which A teams we should expect to see in B. I might even give you uh, one of my er updated top 10s later on if I've got it pulled up I don't even know if I have it pulled up and uh, we'll go into some top tens for fast pitch we'll go into who I think has a good chance of matching up with the Lakers in the first round and why I think the Blazers could pull the upset if they make that matchup happen and I'll tell you some dark horses I think that can win the title. All that and more come up in this week's podcast. Alright. So, as I said before, we are less than three days away from the start of fast pitch season. Uh, which, it will also be my first game broadcasted since... March 12th. It has been almost 150 days. Yeah. It has been that long. So. To start off. I have compiled my early top 10. And I'll run it down the list as I go. Okay, here we go. Well, for those that's viewing on ESPN News, at least, or on the video archive, so we'll start off with Class B. Like I said on the OK Prep Sports, I think until someone can knock off Kiowa, I think they are number one. Which, granted, they did lose quite a bit, including their pitcher, who was probably one of the best pitchers I've seen all year last year. So, well, I, I agree with the guy in the OK Preps boards that said, I can't remember who it was, but I agree with him. Until someone can beat Kiowa, I think Kiowa is the unanimous number one right now. Now, number two, I got to go with Whitesboro. Think about this. They didn't hardly lose anyone last year. And they was state runner-up to Kiowa last year. Because if you remember, it was Kiowa and Whitesboro in the state final. So, I mean, I think Whitesboro's got a good chance to be number one right now. But, of course, everyone... And that's what I said on the OK Preps boards. But they are all like... Until someone can beat Kiowa, Kiowa's the unanimous number one. 
I'm gonna be honest, I just kind of stayed quiet from there because that was probably an argument I was gonna lose. And trust me, anyone that knows me on those OK Preps boards knows I've gotten into my fair share of debates that I've lost. It's like, uh, and I'm going off topic a little bit, but if you guys really want to see some debate style stuff, definitely get on around basketball season. It turns into some ship and sh skip and sh shanning undisputed and first take BS real quick. But uh, that's another topic for another day. But yeah. And then at three, and I'm probably going to get some backlash, but number three, I got to go with Leedy. Well, okay, they didn't make it to state last year, but they came pretty close. Uh, if I remember right, last year... They went to Hammond for regionals, but then the regional got moved to Leedy because the field was, like, s underwater or something. It, like, rained real hard or something. I don't know. It's what one of my guys out around the Elk City area was telling me. That kind of knew the lowdown in that area. Uh... And then number four, you know, a lot. Of, you know, I said last year a lot of people slept on Pittsburgh. I mean, young team last year they bring a big majority of that team back. I'm pretty sure they bring the pitcher back. Uh, not quite sure, but uh, someone, someone quote me if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty sure one of my McAllister sources will uh, back me up on that, but. Uh, well, I w so I w covered the Indianola tournament last year, which my Lady Panthers was in that t tournament. So I kind of watched a little bit on a Pittsburgh, and I was pretty impressed with what they had, honestly. But yeah, last year I thought so many people was sleeping on them. I think they've got real potential this year, uh, for sure. Uh, number five. Now, last year, Hammond, a lot of people thought was overrated, but I didn't think so. I mean, they could hit it plumb out of the park. Defense was good on all cylinders. Uh... In fact, I remember last year, there was a lot of people trying to say, Oh, they're way down. Oh, they're overrated. Just stop. You obviously didn't see what some of my guys out in that area seen. And to be honest, the guys that was calling them overrated and whatnot... I don't even think they were from that region. They was probably from like... I don't know. It's probably one of those people from like the south or the northeast. You know what? Never mind. That's another topic for another day. Who am I kidding? I digress. And then... At number six... So... Roth... I actually seen this team last year when they was A it's where my lady Panthers had to go for regionals I know because I covered that game now I thought Roth could hit it pretty good last year now some of my Ada sources do say the defense needs to get better now a lot of people are saying they should be top three. I mean, I think they're pretty good. But for now, I plug them in at number six. I'm not even quite sure uh, what their schedule looks like. Uh, I could probably get one of my Ada sources to find that out for me, though. I guess maybe 
about a week or two in that'll maybe give me an idea what they're like. don't even know what that conference is like in softball honestly I used to know but I was like three years ago so number seven again another team I actually got to watch in my neck of the woods last year in LaFleur they did lose their pitcher, but they're returning some key pieces. I thought they were pretty good. Uh, I'll actually have a chance to go watch them. Well, uh, for, I'll have a chance. I'll have a chance to go watch them next year, this year, in a couple of weeks. Well, depending on what I'm doing and what week they have us come in yeah I don't really know much on them except that they lost their pitcher but it'll definitely be interesting to see what they're like uh, going forward uh, and number 8 which was probably another surprise team last year in our net now Last year, actually, I don't remember if they made it to state, but I know they was kind of a young team last year, judging by what my Woodward sources was telling me. I'm told they bring everyone back. I really kind of need to see a little bit on them before determining the ultimate verdict. I, I mean... I'm not perfect on these. In fact, this is just my prediction. I don't it's so I don't even know when the first rankings are coming out. I think they'll be out in like a couple weeks, I think. Well it won't be long. I just know the the ADM is out. Uh, 9 and 10. Now, I did kind of have to change this up, especially after someone said Visai was definitely going to be Class A. Uh, so, I guess 9 and 10, I'll go with Surreal and Duke. See, I didn't know Surreal was going to be A or B, but then I see the tentative ADM and it does look like they'll be B. Uh, Surreal is usually pretty solid every year. I like what I've seen out of them. And Duke, well, I'm hearing different things on Duke. I'm hearing they're not as good as last year. I heard they're young. I heard they'll be really good again. I'm hearing different things on them, but I do think they will be pretty solid. Now, I've been getting people on the OK Preps forums being like, Oh, why don't you have Red Oak in your top 10? They're top 5. Now look, I'm not near as sold on them as some of my sources down southeast are. But maybe they'll prove me wrong. I know one of my guys on the boards was telling me they did well against Kiowa, Silo, and Dale in a couple scrimmages. I didn't know that. I hadn't heard anything all on them all summer. They supposedly got a move in, but, well, you know, you know what, never mind, that's another topic for another day. Oh, man. But then, maybe after I see them play a little bit, I think maybe my uh, top ten will change. You know, once I'm, everyone gets going... I believe first games are Monday. Well, for most people, that is. I know I'm actually broadcasting a game on Monday. More on that later, though. Let's get to my Class A top 10. So, number one, and I think it's the unanimous number one, too, and that's Binger Oni. One, 
they bring back everyone. Two, they always have dominant pitching. Their defense is really good. And they have at least four, five, maybe six different players that can crush it out of the park. They was young last year, but from what I've been hearing from all my Anadarko sources out there and some of my guys in that region, I think Binger could, def could definitely be a title contender. I'm not sure who they play first. Again, I haven't seen anybody's schedules, which you know, if anyone wants to send their schedules for me to take an analysis look at, Definitely at me on the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at the cool dude 52 Uh, what the? Oh, wow. Get, I just realized I made an error on my Class A top 10. God. Who did I mean to put? Oh my god, this is, this is the first time in like a while I've made that mistake. But number two, I have a Tushka in at number two. I liked what I seen out of them last year. I think they had a lot of potential. Because they didn't really hardly lose anyone and Tushka is always usually pretty competitive. Uh... Okay, number three, I'm, I meant to put in Canute. I meant to put in Canute. In fact, hold up a sec. I can fix that real quick. Just, uh... Hold up. I may not be able to fix the picture, but I can pull up the font in OBS. I can't believe I actually messed up on this already. Okay, fix that. So at number three, now I didn't really know anything on Canoe early on until I started to pick up bits and pieces from some of my sources out in that area. I was told they looked pretty good the couple scrimmages. Alright, and I'm told the pitching is pretty tough, defense is good. Uh,. I don't remember what leagues they was in. Let me pull that up on the boards real quick. Hmm. But yeah, I know the pitcher was legit. And, uh... God, what league was they in? Uh, the Hobart League was one of them. And I think they was in the Elk City League, I think. I'm not sure. But I know they was in the Hobart League for sure. Okay, yeah. In fact, the... Yeah, in fact, the... Actually, yeah, they was... And then at four, I have a uh, Fairland, which I thought they was pretty impressive last year. I seen they did a uh, really good against some 
out of state teams in a Colorado tournament. Some like big 5A, 6A teams over there. And I looked in that tournament in Colorado and it's supposedly a really good one as well. From what I seen. I think they'll still be pretty stout. And at five, I have a Moreland. Now, I've heard they was pretty good, judging by what I heard from some of my sources out that way. Uh, and Moreland was also in the Elk City League with Canute, I believe. And they were pretty young last year. Sorry, I went quiet there. I was trying to get my focus back. It's been a long week. But yeah, young team last year. I'm told they looked pretty good in the Summer League. And then the Elk City League, as I was talking about. Uh, I think... They'll definitely be top five from what I've been hearing. And then at six, which is Morrison, they are uh, the defending state champion, I believe. They can hardly lose anyone. I expect them to still be pretty good uh, this year. And then seven, there's Vanoss. Now, I hadn't really heard anything on Vanoss up until like yesterday, but they bring back mo everyone, and they got a few that can really hit it out of the park. Hmm. Not sure who all plays, but I think a. From what I heard, I heard a majority of their basketball team plays on the softball team. And you guys have heard... Oh! My fan about fell over, but... From what I've seen, I think Vanoss might be the team everyone is sleeping on right now. Cause you know, every year we've always had that one team that everyone is sleeping on. Like, last year... Everyone slept on Morrison, and they won the title. And then in Class B, you know, they slept on Hammond, saying, oh, they're overrated, they won't make it to state. They did. I swear, people at times can't get their crap right. And then 9 and 10, I gotta go with Stewart and Wister. So Stewart last year was really young. They looked pretty good going into regionals. And Worcester, their pitcher, you know, I got I watched them play last year. That pitcher of theirs was legit. Definitely a good defensive team. And I think Worcester could probably be the sleeper team that makes some noise. Now, Dark Horses. As of right now, people were wondering why I didn't have Shattuck in my top ten. Now, don't get me wrong. They returned everyone. I think they'll be pretty good. They don't have the Bay Girl back yet, though, which, if you remember, that was the point guard that went down during basketball last year. But I ha did hear they may get her back by early August. That was just what one of my guys out in that region told me. They don't know for sure, but they think they're going to get her back by the end of August. I 
think Shattuck will be a sleeper team to watch. And, uh... I don't like to rank my own team. Well, I'm like a lot of I'm like a lot of coaches that don't like to rank their own team. But I will say, my Lady Panthers could be a team to watch for, and you guys will see it. Think about this. I know they only went night. I know they went 1911 last year, and then obviously lost to a pretty stacked Roth and Caddo team and regionals, but good pitcher, only a sophomore, didn't hardly lose anyone, got a good junior high class that's now freshmen come up, I definitely think they're going to be a team that makes some noise, uh, for sure, uh, and I am up against commercial break. We're going to take a break. I'll be right back. When we come back, I will break down the ADM, tell you which teams from 2A we can expect to be in Class A and what Class A teams we expect to be in Class B. And maybe an early top 10. All that and more coming up in just a few minutes. You're listening to the Hunter Shepherd Podcast on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. The Hunter Shepherd Podcast is also sponsored by Purim Panthers Radio. Don't forget you can catch opening day of Fast Bitch 2020 on Purim Panthers Radio starting on Monday. As the Purim Lady Panthers will take home the Liberty Lady Tigers, Hunter Shepherd with the call on the game. You can also see the scores for the game and all other games on the Scortal app. Available on the App Store and Google Play. Do you think all premium fuels are the same? Well, your engine doesn't. New Shell V Power Nitro Plus helps keep your engine running like new because it's engineered to defend against four main engine threats. Gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. So next time, choose Shell's most advanced fuel ever. It's fuel for thought. In engines that continuously use Shell V Power Nitro Plus premium gasoline. First the beef. One hot and deliciously juicy hunk of quality beef. Then the melty cheese making a run for it like it's sliding into home plate in slow, delicious motion. Don't forget the box. Sweet, beautiful box. Do not eat the box. What does it all add up to? The hottest, juiciest quarter pounder yet. Made with 100% fresh beef. Only at McDonald's. It's perfect. Made perfecter. Fresh beef available at participating U.S. McDonald's. Excludes Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories. Let's talk about Daniel. A year ago, he resolved to stop putting off what he wanted to do, get into information technology. Daniel enrolled in my computer career and now is already a few months into his IT career. Make 2020 your year. There are millions of unfilled cybersecurity positions in the U.S. right now, and my computer career is training people to help fill them. No IT experience or education? No problem. It's not rocket science. It's my computer career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You could start your new life as an IT pro in months, not years. Attend classes on campus or live online just twice a week to get what you'll need to start your new career. More than just a school, my computer career helps you get into the the industry by working with hundreds of employers that hire our students. My Computer Career is nationally accredited and financial aid is available for those who qualify, including the GI Bill. Classes start soon, so make New Year, New Career your resolution and take the free career evaluation today at mycomputercareer.edu. Your home is important. That's why GEICO helps make it easy to save on homeowners insurance. Because home is more than just a place. Home is where you build a giant pillow fort in your living room. And when people ask why you have a pillow fort in your living room, you say it's for your dog. And when they ask, well, what kind? You say, "Mm, chocolate lab. And we have a web of lies that's almost as intricate as the crown molding in Fort Pillow. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help protect the pillow soft fortress you call home. Call GEICO and see how easy it is to switch and save on homeowner's insurance.
the Hunter Shepherd podcast on ESPN Radio. Guests appear on the show via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. My top tens for class A and B. Kind of hard for me to do top tens in like 2A through 4A, but especially with, you know, with the whole district system. Believe me, I don't like it near as much. In fact, there's a lot of coaches in 2A through 4A that do not like that system. Especially because of how far some of them have to drive. That's another topic for another day, though. Uh, so, the, the tentative ADM came out earlier today, and I've already noticed, I already think I know which teams for certain from 2A we're going to see in Class A, and which teams from Class A we're going to see in Class B. Some of them are really obvious, and some of them... Kind of hard to tell right now. So I'm gonna pull this up right now. So we'll start with the Class B t- A teams. I think we'll go to Class B. So. Fox and Asher were two of the obvious ones I knew was going to drop. Because, see, I'm pretty sure Asher also had a big class graduate last year. Now, and Fox, I remember, they was in a... Even in Class A, they was pretty stout last year, but... Well... Let's just say some people in the okay preps boards wasn't too on board with their schedule. But and then Ryan and Oilton, I don't really know much on them. I know both of them was class A last year. I figured Oaks Mission was gonna go back down to B. Because I know for a fact they had a big class graduate. And, well, let's just say I... Oaks is in the Armstrong Bank Porum Inventational. I cover that tournament along with all the teams in it. Uh, I'll check that later. Uh, Mog and South Coffeeville. Now, South Coffeeville, I figured they was going to maybe drop back to B for sure, because last year on the ADM, they was barely in Class A. Uh, Maud, uh, I'm kind of shocked Maud dropped uh, Class B. I could have swore their enrollment was in the night, like the mid to high 90s last year. Actually, well, now that that might have been the ADM before mid-season, before the end of the year. Uh, uh, Smithville. Again, they was barely A last year. They graduated a little bit, but I don't think they graduated. Uh oh. Okay, yeah. 
I had to test that. Yeah, my mic came unplugged and I didn't even realize it. Okay. Now, and then Red Oak. I figured Zay was going to go down to B. But some of my guys down south was kept thinking they was going to be still be in A. Because rumor had it from one of my Wilburton sources that Panola actually shut down last year, of course. If you guys remember, Panola was struggling to keep enrollment the past couple years. And I heard they went ahead and shut down. I don't know how true that is, but that's just what I heard. But it looks like they're still going to be B, as they did have a small drop in enrollment. Turner, I think I figured Turner was probably gonna drop because they was on the borderlines between A and B. Now Agra, I'm very shocked they dropped to B. But my my sources out around the Prague area did kind of tell me Agra had a large class graduate, so. Well, that, you probably had, you, there's also the possibility maybe a few transferred away. It's always a possibility. Uh, Verdon, Geary, Cameron, Indianola, Weber's Falls, and Beaver. I knew they was all going to drop. They was all on the borderlines of A. Now, Roth last year was kind of a little higher up. I think they had a little bit of a big class graduate. It'll be interesting to see how they do in B. Maybe they could actually get in the top eight. Because for some reason... And I don't know why, but for some reason... When they was in A... Some people told me the West refused to rank them. And apparently the West sticks together. I don't know if that BS is true, but that's just what one of my guys out in that area told me. That kind of knows a lot of coaches. Uh, actually, quite surprised Indianola's enrollments all the way down in the 80s last year. They was in the mid-90s. Interesting. Uh, Prue and Kiowa, I figured both of them was going to be in uh, B. In fact, Ki everyone was saying Kiowa should have been in B years ago. Uh, and it's not just people in the w East is saying that. People in the West was saying that as well. Uh, Drummond, I figured... They was going to drop eventually. Watts. I know for a fact Watts had a huge class graduate. Last year their numbers was in the low hundreds. Now they're in the mid 80s. So yeah, that gives you an idea. Uh, Tipton. I kind of thought maybe they was going to stay A because they were still because they went up to B in football and most of the eight man teams in football that are B are usually class A in basketball most of the time. Uh, uh Cyril, Earlsboro, Glencoe I figured it was a matter of time before they went to B. I think Earlsboro had been A for the past couple of years. Texoma's another one I think that had a huge class graduate because they was in the low hundreds last year as well. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, Covington, Douglas, and Sentinel, I believe, was kind of on the fringe of between A and B. And then four Cobb Broxton. I figured it was a matter of time before they went to B as well. Now, here's another thing. 
you also gotta take co-ops in the back. Like, Cheyenne Raiden's supposed to be B, but because of their co-op, they will probably be A. And then, same with Fargo Gage. They're supposed to be B. They will probably be A because of their co-op with Fort Supply. Yes, yes. So, I think right now, and I'm going to go out on a limb here, for an early top 10 and for Class B boys, I hadn't really had a chance to come up with one because I didn't know who was returning who. But for class B, actually, never mind. I need more time to work on that because right now, only top eight teams I could possibly I can think of. Asher for one because they're going to be class B this year. If Fox returns what they re what I think they return, they have a chance to be Class B. Duke, Leedy, you can never count them out. Don't quite know what Hammond brought back, though. Uh, I know for a fact if Asher... I know Asher lost the, the, the Hamilton kid, which, which was the... Ba well, he used he was coaching basketball until they brought in Lee Raymer, who is the former Purcell coach. Now the guy I'm thinking of, Scott Hamilton, he's just the baseball coach, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least that's what my guys around Asher told me. I still think Asher could probably be top eight in Class B as well. topic for another day uh, but let's get to the 2A teams that I th think we will see in A so Barnes doll I'm pretty sure they had a big class graduate because they was in like the 140s last year now they're like 109 Okay. And Rattan and Rock Creek. So, Barnsdall, Rattan, and Rock Creek. I think it's... Actually, th and then Drum Right. I think those th four all had big classes graduate. I know Gans did for sure. Because I know a lot of people over there. Drum Right, I do think, had a big class graduate. Because I think they was plumb up near 180 last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So the t first four, you can almost, b and then Worcester, they was up near 150. They're at 130. Same with, yeah. So the first five I know had big classes graduate. Pioneer really didn't go down that much. Same with Wright City, because they was Wright City was about 150. 40 Pioneer is like 139. And then Cato and Hollis really didn't shrink a whole lot. Same with Navajo. Okay, Snyder, Wilson, and Moreland went up a little bit, but not much. They'll be. And then Rush Springs, Tushka, and Wayne. Their numbers are actually kind of the same as last year's. Okay, Wellston's numbers are down a little bit. Allen and Van Oss, their numbers are about identical. Ha okay, then ha Hominy, Quapaw. Yeah, Hominy and Quapaw's numbers are down a little bit. Carnegie, it's safe to say, I think... They stayed the same. Same with Burns Flat Dill City. Now here's where it gets interesting. Z Elmore City, Afton, Tallahena, Hayworth, and Ninica are probably gonna be the five the five largest teams in class A. 
And it's kind of surprising to see Talahina and A, because I don't think they've been an A in years. In fact, I think one of my... One of my guys down southeast was saying last time he remembered Talahina being an A was like 20, 30 years ago. Uh. Now, I know Hayworth and Nenica have been A in the past, but it's been a while, and I think the same... I don't think Afton has been an A in a while, but I know Afton usually had been one of the smaller 2A schools. Well, they're 2A in fast pitch now, but like the past few years, they've kind of been A in a fast pitch before they jumped up to 2A. I don't know, this is a real, it's going to be real, and I tell you right now, okay, and see right here where I say, Nenekah's probably the largest team in A and Frontier's the smallest. Also, got, and as I said earlier, got to take in the fact that Fargo Gage and Cheyenne are in co-ops. Because they're supposed to be in B. But the co-ops they're in keep them in Class A. Yeah. I'll tell you what I was telling a lot of my sources. I think the rankings and the playoffs this year are going to be very, very interesting. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I said this in a previous episode, number one and two on the girl side in Class A is pretty much a lock with Vanoss and Hydro Weekly. Because I know for a fact Hydro got some move-ins. And Vanoss they still got Emily Wilson and Emery Ellis. And they have Ellis's little sister, which I am told is really freaking good. And this is what my Ada sources have told me. They're well, and I know they're well coached. Good shooting. And people say Emery Ellis is like 6'2". I'm thinking more 6'5", 6'6". I know this because I've watched a little bit on them. I've took my notes. You guys know me. I take my notes on every team. I really study my teams well. But yeah, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Class A for sure is about to be loaded. Uh, especially now the boys' side. Oh man, boys' side's going to be unbelievable. Because especially with all those names I just named. In fact, I'll say this. I know Talahina lost a lot. But they find ways to stay competitive. If they're going to be Class A, I could somehow see them finding them their way into the top eight. Same with Wright City. Because I was told Wright City doesn't lose a lot either. It's going to be interesting to see. And you guys heard it here first. Basketball this year in A and B is going to be really interesting to watch. And I am going to take a break. When we come back, I will go into some of my dark horses for the NBA playoffs. And while I believe the Blazers could put the Lakers on upset alert. All that and more coming up in hour number two. If you missed any of my opening segments, be sure to check out the Hunter Shepherd podcast on demand. And we will be back. You are listening to the Hunter Shepherd podcast on ESPN Radio and ESPN News.
Silence fades into the night Coyotes sing at the moonlight These open highways are calling our name And now it's time for us to escape Feel the wind touch our face Let's take a spin to a foreign place These open highways are calling our name And now it's time for us to escape Escape to a world we don't know Escape into the great unknown Escape to a world we don't know Escape into the great unknown Escape And now bringing you the breakdown on the pro and prep scene. The Hunter Shepherd Podcast starts right now. in my opening segments make sure to go check out the Hunter Shepherd podcast on demand so the other day so it's come to my attention the Lakers are falling apart 
It's like, since they went into the bubble, they have been a mess. I do not think they are going to win the finals. In fact, I told you guys at the beginning of the season, I didn't believe the Lakers was going to win the finals. I actually believe... In fact, I'm one of those that actually believe Milwaukee has to win a finals or Giannis is out. That's another topic for another day, though. Colin Cowherd the other day had some interesting takes and how he also thinks the Blazers could pull the upset if they get the 8th seed. There is this misconception, OKC, Chris Paul, for the record, what did we say a couple days ago? Chris Paul deserves MVP votes. He's having a ridiculous season. This was supposed to be a tank job. Philadelphia tanked for five years, couldn't win. OKC tanked for an hour, thanks to Chris Paul, who should be getting MVP votes. But the story today is the Western Conference. Wait, go back a minute. So, you guys remember... About the time that whole Westbrook CP3 trade happened last year, I kept saying Thunder was going to tank and get LaMelo Ball. Oh well, yeah, that lasted about a week. That lasted about a week. I still think Chris Paul should have got MVP votes, and he didn't. I digress, though. The Lakers finish with the number one seed. There is this perception out there, oh, it's quite an accomplishment. Now, in most years, you would be right. And I do believe the West is better than the East. It's like arguing the SEC is the best college football. He's not wrong about the Western Conference. I mean, even though I think the Eastern Conference has gotten better. Conference, can we stop arguing? It is. Next issue. The West has been better than the East for years. They have more great stars, 20 of the top 25 players. But this has been a very weird season. Now, let's just cut the season into two seasons. The regular season and the bubble season so far. These are two seasons, okay? So let's let's remember what happened to the West this year. Because the Lakers finished number one, and everybody's just patting themselves on the back in Los Angeles. Look at this. It was a transition regular season. The Clippers got two new stars, and they had to fit him in. And Paul George missed 22 games. But Houston's good. No, actually, Harden got Westbrook, and then Tony had a whole new staff. Well, Dallas is young and fantastic, but Luka and Porzingis both got hurt. Portland is really good now, but Nurkic wasn't available, and Melo wasn't acquired until the season had already started. Oklahoma City, what a season. Now, let's be honest, the last 20 games they were great. It was it was a total rebuild, and Chris Paul didn't know the names of any of the players. What about Denver? What about him? Super young and talented, but everybody outside of Jokic got hurt this year. Colin, you love Utah. Yeah, I do, but Mike Conley starts the season injured. They had to figure out if Donovan Mitchell could be point. It was a mess. Conley came back. They were in transition all year. Oh, by the way, Golden State and tanked off topic but i always have this theory golden t that steph curry got what was able it was released early but the gold the golden state front office sent him out intentionally to tank think about this the san antonio spurs did the, something similar in the 90s i know i'm going off topic but i'm just yeah, that's something I wanted to point out there about Golden State's tank job. A lot of people's comparing them to the 96-97 San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. The West was in transition all season. New coaches, new stars, new staffs, injuries. And then COVID hit. And everybody got healthy. And now the West... They don't have the issues. Ner He's not wrong. After the shutdown, that's when everyone started to rest up and then everyone got healthy. 
And I noticed a difference, too, once the season started back up. Berkich is back, and Mello is feeling it. Westbrook, Harden, they know what works and know what doesn't. Uh, actually, I still don't think Harden and Westbrook work well together because you got two ball-dominant guards. And I always had this theory, West, West, and, he, and, I, and I noticed Westbrook kind of became a ball hog, well, in his last years with the Thunder after KD left. In fact, I still believe the Rockets are going to be first-round exit because Harden and Westbrook's going to somehow fall apart in the playoffs. Don't at me either. I know they're going to fall apart. It's like, I don't know. Westbrook has been a first round playoff exit in years. Why am I going off topic again? Utah? Well, they're still Utah, but Denver now's healthy. Jokic and all. Dallas, Porzingis, Luka are humming. They're past their injuries. OKC's playing with house money. Clippers now, Paul George and Kawhi. No load management, no days off. It is now the Lakers who have the issues. They don't have Avery Bradley, their best defensive guard. Good luck against Portland. That is one reason I believe the Lakers are going to be on upset alert if Portland gets that eight seed. Because without Avery Bradley, good luck trying to guard Dame. Good luck against Houston. The Lakers. Houston? I don't even have Houston winning the first round. Because I feel like Westbrook's going to do something stupid and cause them to choke. All you guys got to do, look at his playoff highlights after KD left the Thunder. You'll see what I'm talking about. We're a number one seed, but there is a misconception how impressive that was this regular season. Yes, the West is better. Yes, it's loaded. Yes, it's deeper. But everybody outside of the Lakers felt like they were in this weird transition. They dealt with injuries. And now it's the Lakers who have a huge issue. Rondo's out for still another month. Bradley's out for the bubble. You're asking Alex Caruso to step up. I had two scouts texting me last night during this game. And the two scouts, I'm sure they know each other, but they didn't know they were texting me. One a Western Conference scout and one an Eastern Conference scout. And they were like, God, this Laker team, they miss Avery Bradley. They're old. They're slow. They can't. Chris Paul's 35. He looked like the youngest guy and the best player on the floor. I mean, he was... Realize trading for Anthony Davis, you practically made your roster older. And I'm off. This is off top. You know, like I'll save it for the end. I was flying around last night. This is not your typical number one seed in the West. It's not. And there have been down years in the SEC. Like, like where the number the number one doesn't feel quite as good. For a lot of Saban's years, Tennessee was a mess. Georgia didn't have a right coach. Florida didn't have a right coach. Auburn was a mess. I watched the Lakers last night, and one of the scouts told me, he goes, they're not getting, Lakers aren't getting to the Western Conference Finals. He goes, they're not. They can't hit threes, and they can't defend them. You cannot get to a conference finals if you can't hit threes and you can't defend them, and they don't do either. It's not that they're not good. It's not that LeBron and AD haven't worked well. I love them. Those guys I love. But this, this is a very limited team, and the number one seed isn't nearly as impressive as previous years. He's got that right. They are not near as impressive. In fact, I knew as soon as Avery Bradley opted out, they were in trouble because he, they, he, was, uh, he defended the three well. And... Going back to what I was saying earlier, I actually have a weird theory that if the Lakers don't reach the finals, AD's taking his talents elsewhere. And if you guys remember the Brooklyn Nets Boston Celtics trade in 2013, when the Nets made the worst move ever, traded for KG, Paul Pierce, I can't remember who the other guy was, and they gave up like five first round picks or something like that. 
let's just say if AD leaves, declines his player option and leaves, I say this becomes hands down the worst trade, and that would top the Nets and Celtics trade. And everyone knows that trade was bad. It was so bad. Wait, hold up. But yeah, and the way I see it, I actually, you guys are going to call me crazy. Okay, if how if what I think goes down, well, if the Thunder doesn't quite get the, uh, the 4 or the 5 seed, and the Rockets make it to the semifinals, and the Blazers upset the Ro Lakers... I could see the Blazers getting back to a conference finals. I mean, I'll just say it right now. If, if if it were the Rockets and the Blazers in the semifinals, if the Rockets were to keep the four seed, I gotta say, there would probably be no defense played. And... You'd put well, actually, never mind. Cause Harden, I'm still waiting for Harden to play when it matters. And cause, like I said, Harden has choked. He hasn't been good when it matters. I could now dark horse. I could see the Thunder gunning for the conference finals. But here's the thing. Uh, right now, they're the sixth seed. And, uh, by the way, anyone that watched the Thunder game earlier, we don't talk about that. Yeah, we, we don't, that was an ugly one. We do not talk about that one. Uh, I mean, I think they could probably beat the Nuggets in seven. I don't It'd be interesting to see how I... I really don't want to say they're going to lose to the Clippers, but I'm really hoping somehow they can bounce back and get at least the five seed. Just to avoid the Clip. Because here's the thing. I don't exactly know how they would match up against the Clippers in a seven-game series. I feel like... Especially if the Clippers get Montrez Harrell back. If they get Harrell back, then well, I kind of fear that's gonna be that series is gonna be over in five. But I've seen crazier things happen. But the Lakers? No, Lakers will not win it. As for the Eastern Conference. I think Milwaukee wins it out because I mean I think I mean I think Toronto or Boston could give them a run for their money but I ultimately think Milwaukee gets to the to the finals the West is really tough to predict right now like it is just I, I don't know who could come out of the West. Like, one one area, I have the Thunder making it. Another, I got the Blazers pulling off a surprise upset against everyone. Even though I don't... And I only say that because they got everyone back. And Melo is playing really well right now. Like, honestly...
I am up against commercial break. I'm going to take a bra break. God, I cannot speak today. We come back. I will I will give some more football picks for the season. All that and more coming up in just a little bit. Listening to the Hunter Shepherd podcast on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. The Hunter Shepherd podcast is also sponsored by Porn Panthers Radio. Don't forget you can catch opening day of Fast Bitch 2020 on Purim Panthers Radio starting on Monday. As the Purim Lady Panthers will take home the Liberty Lady Tigers, Hunter Shepard with the call on the game. You can also see the scores for the game and all other games on the Scortle app. Available on the App Store and Google Play. Do you think all premium fuels are the same? Well, your engine doesn't. New Shell V Power Nitro Plus helps keep your engine running like new because it's engineered to defend against four main engine threats. Gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. So next time, choose Shell's most advanced fuel ever. It's fuel for thought. In engines that continuously use Shell V Power Nitro Plus premium gasoline. First the beef. One hot and deliciously juicy hunk of quality beef. Then the melty cheese making a run for it like it's sliding into home plate in slow, delicious motion. Don't forget the box. Sweet, beautiful box. Do not eat the box. What does it all add up to? The hottest, juiciest quarter pounder yet. Made with 100% fresh beef. Only at McDonald's. It's perfect. Made perfecter. Fresh beef available at participating U.S. McDonald's. Excludes Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories. Let's talk about Daniel. A year ago, he resolved to stop putting off what he wanted to do, get into information technology. Daniel enrolled in my computer career and now is already a few months into his IT career. Make 2020 your year. There are millions of unfilled cybersecurity positions in the U.S. right now, and my computer career is training people to help fill them. No IT experience or education? No problem. It's not rocket science. It's my computer career. Go to mycomputercareer.edu and take the free career evaluation today. You could start your new life as an IT pro in months, not years. Attend classes on campus or live online just twice a week to get what you'll need to start your new career. More than just a school, my computer career helps you get into the industry by working with hundreds of employers that hire our students my computer career is nationally accredited and financial aid is available for those who qualify including the gi bill classes start soon so make new year new career your resolution and take the free career evaluation today at mycomputercareer.edu your home is important that's why geico helps make it easy to save on homeowners insurance because home is more than just a place Home is where you build a giant pillow fort in your living room. And when people ask why you have a pillow fort in your living room, you say it's for your dog. And when they ask, well, what kind? You say, the chocolate lab. And we have a web of lies that's almost as intricate as the crown molding in Fort Pillow. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help protect the pillow soft fortress you call home. Call GEICO and see how easy it is to switch and save on homeowner's insurance. The Hunter Shepherd Podcast on ESPN Radio. Guests appear on the show via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. to do A through 6A all together because I really hadn't had time to gather my notes yet uh, I know in A 
You know, I already did B and C, I believe last week it was. Last week. So, for class A, right now, I think. Uh, I should actually pull up my notes. I had some up on the OK Preps boards. Find them. I don't know why I closed the tab. I was still looking at them. Okay, here we go. So, <laughs> I'd say my top three contenders right now has got to be Ringling, defending state champion, but I like what they bring back. Cashin. And Thomas Fay Custer. Well, I know for a fact Thomas has uh, has that one uh, lineman that just committed to play at OSU, and I've watched a little bit on the kid. He's legit. He's a uh, offensive and defensive lineman, I believe. Now a couple dark horses I will throw in: Gore, Stroud, Wewoka. Well, and then, it's like, I know, like, I know you people are going to try to say Gores in a weak district. They have good athletes, so. And I'm pretty sure they bring a lot back. And I like what their head coach over there does, for sure. I think the, they'll be an interesting team to watch. Stroud and Wewoka. You know, Wewoka gave everything, gave Stroud everything they wanted last year. And that, I guarantee whoever wins that district, which is District 7, that district's going to be interesting. Uh, well, yeah, I would not sleep on Pahuska at all because we know they we know they have a quarterback in Bryce Drummond that's really good I believe he committed to North Texas I read that on the uh, somewhere on the Oklahoma I've watched his highlights that kid's got a hell of a throwing arm I'll say that yeah not quite like that Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen type arm, but close enough. Close enough. Now, in Class 2A... Oh, crap. I'm actually going to pull up the, uh, the districts because I actually didn't get to do my 2A notes yet. So, 2A, the thing is, 2A could possibly be wide open this year. Because, like, 2A is always really interesting to watch. And, well, for one, I think you really got to keep an eye. Oh, I don't know what Rejoice Christian brings back, but I know... I feel like you can't sleep on them. Uh, I say a couple different teams to watch. Vian and Eufaula. For one. 
Now, Ufala, they did bring their quarterback. I was told they got Stigler's quarterback last year. But here's the thing. Ufala returns their quarterback. Question becomes, will their quarterback from last year start, or will there be a competition for the move-in from Stigler? That's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, Beggs. You really cannot sleep on bags. Especially, they got a very good defense as well. I know they bring back the Daniels kid. Uh, the, the one that committed to Texas A&M. Kid is probably one of the best defensive linemen I've seen in Class 2A football. Uh, so, I think... Vian, Ufala, and Beggs are going to be the three teams to watch closely. Now for 3A, let me go back to my note. Now I do have some notes on 3A a little bit. So, 3A, I honestly think it's probably going to come down to Kingfisher, Heritage Hall, and Lincoln Christian. I, other than those three, I really don't know much on 3A. Well... I can't, it's hard for me to throw Stigler in that conversation when uh, they lost their quarterback. What? Oh, wait. I did not realize that was echoing. Wow. Okay. I knew I thought I was going crazy, but I heard an echo. And that was Yeah, I didn't realize I had OBS on monitoring output. But yeah. It's hard for me to throw Stigler in the mix when uh their quarterback went to Ufala. Oh yeah, by forgot on two A Agabell's gonna be an interesting one to watch because I forgot they went down the 2A and I like what they had last year and they bring a lot back so that's going to be an interesting one to see now 4A uh, if I can pull it up For a right now, I think So, dish, so 4A, I think it's going to be wide open. I had Pogo going back-to-back -back originally, but that was before one of my sources from Pogo said they lost a bunch. And I did not realize they had a really, really tough non-district schedule this year. From what I heard, seen... But what one of the guys on the OK Preps board said, they got three Arkansas teams on non-district that is supposedly very good. He just said 
It says here, Killer Non-District, Alma, Kelly, and Shiloh. And I've heard those three are really good. Judging by what some of my sources have said. And the one guy thinks start 0-3, 1-5. I don't know. And he thinks whoever wins between them and Fort Gibson will finish fourth. But, right now, I think I gotta go with Bethany, Tuggle, and Broken Bow. Uh, I mean, I'd like to put Weatherford in that picture, but I really don't know what that district's going to look like until midseason. And Salisaw could easily be another team on the rise. Hilldale? I want to put Hilldale in the mix because I know they got a good move in at offensive line and defensive line. Well, I know him because he used to play for us here in Borum. Uh, so, I don't know. I I honestly could think we may see it could be Bethany and Tuggle for the title. That's unless I see something mid-season. But other than that, it is going to be very hard to predict right now. Uh, now, 5A, I really didn't have any notes on this, but... 5A looks really wide open this year. I think... I'm going to be honest, I think Carl Albert wins their fifth in a row, honestly. I just think 5A is that down right now. Well, outside from Bishop McKelly and Bishop Kelly and McAllister, other than that, I can't really think. Now, I've been told Edison's probably going to be way down without Sevion Morrison. The running back that committed to go play for Nebraska? Yeah. I know one guy thinks they have they have Edison way too high in the polls. I know District Four. I'll say this: District Four is super weak. And that's judging by what a lot of my Tulsa sources and a lot of what my OKC sources have said. It's now 6A. Now 6A Division 1. Outside of Union and Jenks and Broken Arrow. I'm not quite sure what anyone brings back, but I liked what I seen out of Mustang last year. And I like what a Blankenship is doing out there. The other one. There's two. I can't remember which one was at Mustang, but I know Bill Blankenship's at a Wasso. Ooh. I didn't realize they were both in 6A... Division 1, District 2. Wausau and Mustang might actually be a good matchup this year. I think they played last year, didn't they? Someone quote me if I'm wrong on that. Now, 6A, D2. Uh, District 2. I really don't know what Booker T is going to look like. I know they're usually pretty good, but I know they got a new coach. Muskogee, 
Uh, really haven't heard much on them, but I'm pretty sure they bring their quarterback back. Because I think their quarterback was just a junior. Ponca City looked promising at the end of last season. I think Bixby definitely wins District 2, because I like what I see out of Bixby every year, honestly. Now, as for District 1, ooh, that's going to be a tough one to predict, because you got Stillwater, Lawton, Dell City, and... Deer Creek, Edmond, and Midwest City all in the same district. It's going to be interesting to see how District 1 and 6AD2 looks like. Yeah, that's why I say 6AD1 and D2 is like pretty much watching an SEC football game. You never know what's going to happen every week. That's for certain. Yeah. I think that's going to about do it for this week's episode. Remember, if you have any questions for me, thoughts on the show, or comments, you can at me anytime on the War Hater Flowers Twitter feed at the Cool Dude 52 That'll about do it for this week's episode. You've been listening to the Hunter Shepherd Podcast on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. I'll catch you all in the next one. Also, don't forget, if you want to see me broadcasting again, I'll be back on the mic on Monday on Porham Panthers Radio. Lady Panthers take on Liberty Lady Tigers. I'll be on the mic three times that week. Uh... Post my broadcast schedule to the channel uh, later on. I, I've already posted on Twitter, but definitely going to be a good time. I will catch you guys in the next one.